trip on stomping conservatives and rational libertarians. So get ready for two hours of news and opinion you can only get from GranitRock.com. And indeed, it is Rock Talk. I am Skip Murphy, your host today. I am joined in the studio by Rick Olson, who has some news of the day. Mike Rogers is on the line uh, with us from California. And we also have Ed Nailed in studio. Rock Talk is a production of GranitRock.com, New Hampshire's leading conservative uh, and libertarian blog site, along with the, the, uh, the nice folks at CNHT, Coalition of New Hampshire Taxpayers, of which Ed Nail is the chair. And uh, I basically have to say a couple of things here as we warm up. There's lots of stuff to talk about today. The events of this week are just just almost beyond comprehension as far as what's been going on. But some of our music is not going to go quite as well as what we would hope because we're, Steve is out today. And unfortunately, I could not get our piece of software that does our nice little jingles and our PSAs and all that other stuff set up in time. So, oh, well. <laughs> you, you've, you've agreed to sing? Yeah, we may break into song every so often when you have a, you know, some sort of a hard break. It'll be a really oh. hard break. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I guess. So, anyways. Um, you going to uh, sing the Mafia's Motel song for us, Ed? Well, I, I forget the lyrics to that, but we'll hum. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, all, come all ye voter fraudsters. Non, non, come all ye non-residents. Come, come <laughs> 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 yes, we can repurpose a Christmas song for that. No problem. But anyways, gentlemen, um, tell me, I'm, I'm going to quickly go around uh, the horn here. Rick, you've got some news. Let us know what it is. Well, I don't know, maybe I'm stupid, but uh, I filed to run for state rep in District 43. Wow. This is, this is good. I don't know what possessed me at the time, but I had two bucks in my pocket and some time, so I went into City Hall and said, what the heck? <laughs> Wonderful. Well, well, we want to say thank you very much for even trying. I mean, it's a, it's more Democrat than Republican district, right? Oh, very much so, yeah. Well, in fact, there are probably some Democrats who would otherwise stay home on election day if I'm on the ballot. <laughs> well, Democrats would stay home now that I'm on the ballot. We're assured that they'll show up. Yeah, high turnout. Yeah. 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 So. Great. <laughs> well, we're going to have to schedule you in at some point to talk about some of the issues that will be driving you. I, I bet you, we, uh, Ed and Mike, I bet you we know what some of those are. Sure. Sure. But uh, we'll treat you just like all the other candidates. Horribly. Horribly. That's, huh? that's oh, not that's true. true. We can get him to cry, right, Mike? Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> no. Yeah. no. Congratulations. We need people in, in all the spots. You know, we need conservatives running. If we don't have conservatives running, all we can do is cry them, you know, cry into milk. So uh, people on the ballot, yeah, I, I, somebody I, vote for. I, I, yeah, I can see the, uh, I can see the headlines now. Yeah, gun nuts storms, storms the state house. <laughs> yeah, gun nuts. I love that term. That's a, you know, I'll wear that one like a badge of honor. <laughs> and... Yes. Skip has found something on the computer. Maybe he has access to our we much uh, worked on music. Skip? No, no. I'm getting a. Uh, anyway, uh, keep Rick, if you're going to be running for office in Manchester, that gives us a candidate in Manchester. Sure. Who can ask the city clerk for information, keep track of uh, who's voting in Manchester, which we've been doing for a while. Sure. Uh, recently, I don't know if you're aware of this, but the city clerk in Manchester, uh, Matt Norman, yeah. just purged the city's list ah. on his own outside the statewide purge. He sent out 8,165 letters to people who had not voted since 2008. That should have been done in 2010. Right. So of the 8,165 letters, 4,400 came back as undeliverable. Oof. And of the 80... I, I, I can't believe the turnover in the city is that high, so what conclusion should we draw? Same-day same voters. Well, that's... The, in reality, remember, Manchester is about 110, 115,000 people. Well, documented people. 52,000 registered voters. Right. So here's the rest of the numbers, though. Uh -huh. He's the Matt Norman on his own outside the 10-year purge, which, mm -hmm. which is supposed to do, purged the city's list, came back with uh, 4,400 undeliverable letters. Uh, the people who did respond, 
take a wild guess how many said, oh, yes, keep me on the checklist. Out of 8,165 people who voted in 2008. Three? 103. Oh, 103. 103. Yeah. That's a pretty scary number. Then uh, we now have a list of 8,000-some-odd questionable voters for me to do some research on. So thank you to Matt Norman, who should actually be, careful now, Secretary of State as opposed to the guy we have. Because Matt Norman, of all the city clerks and clerks, or the people in charge of elections, actually seems to care about the voter checklist sure. in his city. He just took off 8,000 ghost voters that people like you would have to mail to. Yep. So you may not have a list of all the real voters in, in uh, Manchester, but now you will. So uh, we'll be turning that over to you. I'm buying that list from the city. So it's going to cost me $180 for that list, wow. which should, should cost me nothing. Mm -hmm. or a couple bucks to have it have it emailed to me and it'll be in PDF so I can't use it but I'm going to have it converted and uh, this is kind of I guess this is breaking news right yes I'm gonna send it to other states to match with their lists <laughs> I have some, I have some yeah isn't that Mike picked right up on that thank you Mike uh, I have two other states that would be very happy to run our 8,000 ghost voters in Manchester versus their list of man uh, Massachusetts North Carolina and Florida and Virginia to see if anybody's double registered. You know, one of the things that uh, that isn't really all that surprising, but you do the math, eight thousand. What's the percentage of that? Ten. There's fifty-two. Ten. There's fifty-two thousand real yeah, voters. Yeah. So, so we're talking paper. twelve, thirteen percent. Yeah. That's a huge number because usually an no, error no, rate. No, 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 Skip. We're talking uh, nearer to fifteen percent. Yep, that's true. But you look at that, and most companies want to keep error rates overall, no matter what area of the company, functional area of the company you're talking about, to at least 4%, 3%, 2% if you can get it. Well, I mean, think about this. These are people who registered to vote in 2008. Right. And of the 8,165, 4,400 were undeliverable. Right. It's amazing. Uh, but, but you look at that and you go, why isn't government trying for that? The, you know, coming from the manufacturing area there's this lean sigma you know sigma six kind of deal where you're constantly trying to look where is the root problem of errors and here we've been presented with one that the media as well as those that are supposed to be taking care of this stuff except for mr Nor norman you said right uh, Matt Norman. Matt Norman. City clerk, uh, all hail Matt Norman, city clerk of Manchester. Yeah. Thank you very much, Matt Norman. Those are the kinds of guys that are actually just doing their jobs, and everybody else is going, blah, 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 blah. I mean, they should be doing this constantly, not just for when the law comes. And this is why I rail against bureaucracy. Bureaucracies tend to do what they're supposed to do, but only what they're supposed to do when they're supposed to do it. They don't take, in a lot of cases, the initiative to say, I can do a little bit more. The culture slaps them down if they try to do it. Or that. when they're forced to do it. Yeah, well, that's the other thing. Or they try to make it as hard as possible. I put in a right to know request concerning the Guilford School Board snafu, and they want to charge me even electronically 25 cents a page. Right. You know, at that point, I'm sorry, we've already paid in taxes for this information. Well, my argument is, if you can charge people for the minutes of meetings, which is how someone who can't make the meeting attends the meeting, mm -hmm. why can't you just charge people who come sit in the meeting? Because they're using up lights, they're using up heat, sure. they're using spaces. So why don't we just charge people to come to a public meeting if we're going to charge them for the minutes of that meeting? I mean, the easiest way to resolve a lot of the problems we have with a suspicious populace, waste, fraud, and abuse, and mismanagement would be put everything out where everybody can see it. That's the cleanest, quickest, cheapest way of doing this. I had uh, an issue with I'm helping Concerned Veterans for America uh, get some documentation from the city of Rochester. They asked for the list of people who live in Rochester who get a military exemption or credit. Mm-hmm. So first they're told, oh, we can't get that for you. Or, but it's difficult. We don't keep that. Then we get, oh, we keep a record, but only as an MS-1 form. That's a standard form you fill out. You send to the DRA to, so that they can set your tax rate. An MS form is municipal services form. All cities and municipalities have them. So they said, okay, we'll give you the MS form. Well, the MS form says there's 1,800 people who receive a veteran's credit or benefit in the city of Rochester. So that's all we can give you. So I have to email back to the city and say, well, because you have a sum total of the people who are on the list, 
you have a list. It's a public document. You don't have to create it. They're saying we we would have to create a document to comply with your right to know request. Well, you, if you have 1,800, <laughs> that means you have a list. If yeah. you have the value that's offset on your uh, the value of property that's offset taken off the uh, li- the uh, assessment for the city to set the tax rate, then you have the addresses. Well, you have the names. You have the addresses. And I, so I wrote back to him, and on behalf of CBA, I said, wrote back as a former selectman who kept such lists. I'm asking for that list, which you obviously have, and at this time I'm requesting the name of your city council so I can link him up to our email stream and maybe he can clarify any misunderstanding. Well, we got the list. But, you know, just automatically you ask some bureaucrats or people in in positions of power who should know better for a public document. The first thing they think is, how can I charge him more more than he's willing to pay or not comply? I've even heard of one municipality, I'm waiting to get some copies of this, who put out like size 40 type, so there'd be more pages. 40? I mean... Yeah, great big type. You, so that there why would be they so many, d- To make it too expensive. Well, so I understand. I was it, already told that. I'm waiting for copies of that because that's going to go on in a frame. And then next time we have this, uh, a right to know commission established to weaken the right to know law like the last one did, we'll, um, we can use that as an example to hopefully smart legislators who will not tinker with the right to know law. They added part to, of the right to know law. They don't have to create a document to comply with the right to know law. So now everybody says, oh, we'd have to create a document. You know, we know what documents you have. We're asking for stuff you already have, minutes and things like that, lists of uh, people you have to submit to the state to get your tax rate set. These are simple questions, and they, they can't uh, can't find a way to reply without bullying them, you know. Or, well, bullying, I think, is the right question, but we're going to come back to bullying that. Bullying the back. Yeah, we're going to come back to that in just a minute because we've got to go to a quick break. At least I'm going to try to do the quick breaks that uh, we keep hearing about. But I want to hear more about this, sir. But anyways, Mike, you can hold on for a minute. Oh, I, I sure can. Uh, and, and that's just a couple of topics. There's just so much this week, as you said. We've got to get to some of this. There is indeed. But, folks, we're going to take a brief uh, intermission here, and we'll be right back. This is the Coalition of New Hampshire Taxpayers. We're located at 8 North Main in Concord, New Hampshire. This is a repository for all things conservative and municipal. So if you have a problem in your town, your school, your budget committee, the right to know law, and now at the top of our list is voter fraud. you have a tip for us, some information for us, you want to join or help us out, cnht.org. Hi, this is Rich Gerard, host of Gerard at Large in the Morning, the Manchester area's only locally owned, locally operated, focused, and interested, riveting radio show heard live every Monday through Friday from 6 to 9 on 90.7 FM WLMW, New Hampshire Family Radio, and available 24-7 live or archived at GerardAtLarge.com. Be sure to tune in. Raw Talk. coming back and we are back I'm Skip Murphy and we have a host of folks in the studio today although you can only see uh, basically just the two of us we are going to be joined in just a little bit with more we have Mike Rogers on the phone calling in from California Rick Olson who has just declared his candidacy for the New Hampshire House of Representatives and Grokster and president of the London Dairy Fish and Game Club and president of the New Hampshire Wildlife Federation right yeah, it's not like I don't have enough to do when I go around and file, you know. <laughs> yeah, so, folks, we... So, let, me, let me just touch on those memberships for a second. It's a coalition. I got... Uh, yeah. Go on. Go ahead. Are we live? Yes, we are. Yeah, so, so, Rick, are you also a member of, of an organization I only just became acquainted with, Ducks Unlimited? Uh, no, I am not. And the reason I am not is because... I am a card-carrying NRA member. I'm a certified NRA instructor. Uh, I'm a member of Gun Owners of New Hampshire. And at some point, as good as these groups are, you've got to draw the line. You can't join them all. You know? 
So uh, I was just I was just thinking we needed this Guns Unlimited member to introduce to David Campbell from Nashua as a, <laughs> the, the duck tr- the duck treadster. But uh, I was uh, I was amused this week because I found out that not one but two uh, high, highly placed. Uh, people were actually members, uh, not, in, not the least of which was James Hetfield of Metallica. Yep, absolutely. Oh yes, that's right. He was, uh, there are a bunch of heavy metal folks who aren't too happy with him. Um, he was, no, actually, they're, they're more folk players. He was going to be, Metallica was playing at this uh, concert in Britain, I believe it is, and when they heard the, and saw some of the signs that he was a big game hunter, they got rather upset. Mm-hmm. But I have to tell you, the bear that he shot in Siberia, that thing was massive. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You know, that, that, turned, that turned out to be a hoax photo. The, the blaze retracted it. Uh, it wasn't actually Hetfield with that one, but he does go bear hunting, and he is narrating History Channel's The Hunt about Kodiak bear hunting in Alaska. Yes. Um, we're, we're talking bears? We were talking bears. I, uh, uh, just as a, uh, as a segue, we were going to ask, gosh, you know something? I've forgotten what it was that we were going to talk about right after, uh, right before the break. We'll stick with the bears, I guess. <laughs> You're coming. Yes, you are. Huh. Okay. I have a friend, Eb Chamberlain, lives in Windsor, and he's been photographing a 450-pound bear outside of his uh, bedroom window. He's got pictures of wow. looking right in the window at him. It's been eating his bird seed, <laughs> so uh, he put electric fence up so he can still feed some of the birds and uh, and keep them away. They do not like electric fences. So now he um, he leaves a pile for Eb to step in for putting up that electric fence. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he thinks of that electric fence. But it's a ver- beautiful, big black bear coming in. It's amazing how big they can get on bird seed. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, well, this is still the time where you really want to be cautious about what uh, what you put out because they're still hungry. Yeah. They're going to be hungry for another month or so. Yeah, you know, in New Hampshire, though, it's not a big deal. Because bears in New Hampshire are not aggressive. They're not. They're not an aggressive strain of bear. Um, I mean, if a couple of bulldogs can chase one away, certainly, you know, that's it's not. It's not that's a big true. Deal. My neighbor gets feeds on posts out, you know, on the edge of her yard, and they come and get the fur feeders all the time. Empty yeah. them. We have them on the side of the house that they can't reach. They don't even come on our property anymore. Sure. They used to come out in the morning, and we have uh, glass doors to go in and out, and a glassed-in porch, and there'd be a bear paw here and a bear paw in a corner where he tried to reach around the side of the building to get at the feeders. So uh, they just gave up. Just They don't get any feed from our place, so they don't come by anymore. But they do stop about 600 feet away at the neighbor's place, bend over the, the metal poles, take the feeder, pour it like a shot glass, I imagine, and they're, and they're out of there. Great. So it's, you know, I like to feed them the birds because we're getting indigo bunnings, cardinal, uh, we have a pair of indigo bunnings. We've got bluebirds, which we don't feed. But we have a whole host of birds that come around. They're, they're great to watch. So, But I don't want to lure bears in and have them on the porch again like we have in the past. No, that would not be a good thing. No, remember, a fed bear is a dead bear. Once they become familiar, you know, then you stop feeding them. That They may become not afraid of you, and they may become aggressive. Yeah. It's, and it's, guess who else died this week? At least the political career. Mr. Eric Cantor. Oh, Eric, Eric Cantor. Yes. Eric Cantor. I felt really, really bad about that in a giddy way. <laughs> I think he was like the last guy to know, too. What do you think, Mike? Oh, he was absolutely the last guy to, to know. Shake him. He had internal polls saying he was 34% ahead. They had regular polls saying he was 13% ahead. And the voters knew that he was toast. What gets me is that even afterwards, he's still trying to push this DREAM Act or uh, the DACA. He's you know, been there's, in- there's several different bills that are trying to say if you're an illegal child, you are still able to come here and you will eventually get residency and perhaps citizenship. And then this week the news broke of you know almost 100,000 minor children coming across the desert all by themselves. And as one person has said it, this is Obama's doing. This is his administration's doing. This is also Cloward Piven. That's his goal. It is. Yeah, he has no problem. They with are it. already collapsing what the government can do. This was, to, and just as a, a recall, this was done back uh, several decades ago by two sociologist professors mm-hmm. at New York University, Cloward and Piven. Who and also, also they, are famous for 
same-day registration. Yes. Well, the whole idea was to collapse the entire capitalist and wel welfare system as we now know it. They were absolutely hardcore socialists, hardcore left folks, and they hated America and hated the systems that ran it. They said the only way we can get rid of it, because most people are happy with it, is to collapse it from within. And they almost put New York City bankrupt. Almost. They came within an a couple of months. Again. And now we see Obama that uh, basically community organizers want chaos. We have nothing but chaos in this country right now. And you look around in the world, and because he has pulled back America's leadership, we see chaos in the Middle East. We see chaos. I mean, my, my older son lost people when he was deployed to Iraq, and he's livid right about now. Mm -hmm. Should Same be. thing with my younger son, who was in Afghanistan. He said, why did my buddies die? They're just going to go back to the same way that we were before. Instead of what we did after World War II and the Korean War, we left our troops there because good leadership knows those troubles aren't tamped down within a whole lot of time. You have to spend decades doing this stuff. And that's what we had to do in Germany and Japan. And we see Obama. Uh, you know, people keep and I'm sorry if I'm monopolizing this, I'll shut up in a second, but let me make this one point, and then Rick, I want to get your opinion on this, and then Mike, and then Ed. He's, it looks like he's learned from history, and is and everything that's been successful, he's decided not to do. That's Harvard, the Harvard way. Well, is it a case of just sheer incompetency, or is it really what I've been saying for years, which is determined weakness? You, you, I can't see this amount of incompetence in so many different areas all at the same time and go, this this just can't be random. I, I just, I think uh, I, I just think it's seagull management. You know, that's, that's exactly what it is. It's in pure rank incompetence. We have a president, you know, it's like Charles Krauthammer has been quoted, I don't know how many times, you know, it's like he woke up one day and discovered he was president, you know, and, and, and uh, I mean, that, that's telling right there. I mean, he never knows what's happening. He's so far f removed from the things that happens within his administration. I, I, I would go to the metric first that it's just rank incompetence. He's in over his head. Mike? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure he's in over his head from the point of view of any competent executive management, but I don't think he's over his head in terms of policy direction. I think he's setting it, uh, as Skip said, the determined weakness. Um, you know, he, he's, I think, guiding things in, in a direction that's bad all around, excessive reg regulations promulgated without uh, congressional approval, uh, the spending, uh, the weakness, all of that, I think, is, is, uh, is planned, but not planned as in meticulous detail. It's just like, go forth and create trouble, and I'll sit back and play golf. <laughs> like an arsonist. You don't care how the building burned down, as long as it burned down. Oh. You know, that's yeah. all he is. The, the question will be, he's got two more years of wielding executive authority. Are we going to survive long enough? We're going to find out who our friends are. Well, it, it, you know, there's, people <laughs> there's a lot of ways of taking that. But I also I look at it this way, that is there going to be enough of the country left to reestablish the rule of law? Or have we gotten to that metric where people aren't going to because it's shown not to work for the little guy. I mean, when you want to fundamentally transform America, you want to change its, not its operational institutions, you want to change the very psychological character of the individuals. That's called public school. Well, the, yeah, there's that too. All right, guys, we have to take a break at this point. Um, on the other side, we're supposed to have Kevin Bloom and company coming in. But uh, we'll see what happens in just a, a few minutes. And, Mike, you, you can stay on if you want, but otherwise... I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay as long as you put up with me, guys. Okay, uh, very good. good. Goodbye, I, Mike. I'm, not, I'm not flying for a few hours. <laughs> okay, well, we got, we got to leave you right now. and we'll t Folks, we'll be back on the other side.
This is the Coalition of New Hampshire Taxpayers. We're located at 8 North Main in Concord, New Hampshire. This is a repository for all things conservative and municipal. So if you have a problem in your town, your school, your budget committee, the right to know law, and now at the top of our list is voter fraud. you have a tip for us, some information for us, you want to join or help us out, cnht.org. The Center for Redress of Grievances, LLC, was established officially November of 2012 for the purpose of becoming a media outlet for those individuals who believe and have documentation that they've been unjustly treated by local, state, or federal government agencies. Our mission is to document their stories and to get them out to the public. By collecting and organizing this data, the Center for Redress will be able to better show the public and our legislature that there are issues with some of our government agencies that may be widespread and need to be addressed. Although we are not a nonprofit, we do provide all of our services at no cost to our clients. All of our services may include screening interviews, documentation gathering, audio video of court hearings, and production of Speak Up, which is our television show. We're funded exclusively through sponsorship of Speak Up and our advertisers on our website. We hope to help those individuals who, with well-documented stories, need to be heard with credibility when the other agencies and media sources turn a deaf ear to them. You can go to our website at www.centerforredress.com and check us out. Anything you would like to donate is truly appreciated, and we will put it to good use. Rock TV.